The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Welcome to The Pulse. I'm your host, Andy Blake. Now, many of you might know me looking like this. But starting today, I want you all to know me, well, looking like this. I come from the village of Vunimono in the province of Tailevu, with links to the province of Lao, and for seven years worked as the creator and producer for Fiji's first and only fashion TV show, Chechemon. My new show, The Pulse, will profile interesting guests, SMEs, tourism and attractions, travel, food, including local culture. So, fasten your seatbelts and prepare to take flight with me right here on my TV. On the show this week, we visit Sailors Beach, Fiji on the infamous Wailolo Beach. The Nasali Water Taxis, an iconic attraction of the Rewa province. And in our Culture Exposed segment, we profile the world-famous Sawailau Caves in the Yasaos. But first, we meet a very popular face who is no stranger when it comes to Fiji's limelight. In 1996, she won the title of Miss Hibiscus and fast forward two years later, becoming an honorable member of our Fijian parliament. This is my Talonoa with Linda Tambuya. Bula vinaka, namaste, uh, noa ia e Maori Fiji. I am Linda Tambuya. I am a member of parliament and the opposition whip. I was born in New Zealand in Christchurch. I actually was there because my parents, actually my dad was there studying. So I was one of those kids born overseas because, you know, my dad was overseas studying. So uh, I spent the first three years of my life in Christchurch, New Zealand. And so I came to uh, Fiji when I was four years old and I was raised in Wakanisila in Colombo. I had to have a crash course on speaking Tauke because I only could speak English. But I grew up there and then I uh, went to Andila Kumbau School for secondary school. But before that, I went to Yetsen Primary School. I've, uh, I grew up in this informal settlement in Wakanisila in Colombo. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up in extreme poverty. At the time when I was little, there was no running water. Um, we had pit toilets. We lived in big families at my grandfather's home. And so, ever since I was that young, I would look around and think to myself, I don't want anyone else to grow up the way I did or the way I am. And I used to think to myself, I need to be somewhere where I can make decisions that can affect everyone. So I think that's as young as I can remember is when politics came into my life. I went off to uh, Bond University to study law. I've always been interested in the area of human rights, um, individual rights, and it tied in very much with my um, fight against poverty that I'd always known all my life. You know, I, I needed to be able to match the law that went along with that. You know, what are your bill of rights? Um, what is your right to, you know, uh, food, your right to w clean water, um, your right to life, your right to employment. So those things are very pertinent to me, uh, you know, studying. And of course, because of that, I went on to uh, do my master's in law in America. But I, when I came back from, Fiji, from Australia to Fiji to um, study, to go to work, I was bonded to the Fiji government. So I joined the Director of Public Prosecution's Office. Now, all my other colleagues, they went into NGOs, they went to private law firms because it paid so much more. But I wasn't really driven by, you know, by what I was getting paid. 
I knew I had to give my parents all of my pay because that's just what you do when you go overseas and study, you come back and you just live with your parents again, which is what I did. So all my pay was going to them, but I, I really enjoyed the satisfaction of dealing with justice, you know, um, bringing justice to those that have been uh, wronged, you know, victims of crime. So I felt very passionate about uh, victims of crime. Uh, as a lawyer, I, um, I was able to prosecute uh, some cases uh, dealing with rape. Now, I, you know, for me, it's a, being a prosecutor, at least for me, was a, it's a catch-22. You know, you're, on the one hand, you are grateful that justice occurs when you win a case. But on the other hand, you've got to be very, very cautious about rejoicing in a win. Because it always means someone's liberty. You know, someone has just lost a father that has to go to prison for years. So a family is fatherless. Uh, a family is penniless because the breadwinner is now in prison. So I've always dealt with those kinds of issues ever since, you know, I was in, in prosecution. Um, you know, having a strong sense of justice also comes with a strong sense of uh, morality. Um, they go hand in hand, you know, and, and you know, if, if you're fighting for justice, you've got to be able to have your morals about you. You've got to have integrity about you. You've got to be able to be um, uh, incorruptible, if that's the right word to use, um, where you cannot be bought to achieve justice. You've, you've just got to get to that level. And I think I learned that in my days in prosecution more than any of the other achievements I've had. So that to me was my greatest achievement being a prosecutor, was being able to balance uh, justice with morality, justice with integrity, um, and not just winning at any cost, but being mindful of the, the social costs that go with it. And of course for politics, um, achieving the highest number of votes in 2018 for a woman, behind only the three political party leaders and the Attorney General. Uh, to me that was quite an achievement and I felt when that happened, without having a title, being a young commoner woman, I looked at those things that the three odds against me, being a young commoner woman. And I make no excuses for that. I am, it's not about feeling sorry for myself, hardly. I, I actually turned it around and made them my strengths. And this is probably something that people don't know about me was that um, when, I was, um, when I was six months pregnant with Mercedes, my oldest, it was a very low point for me. And I think that was, everything was just crashing down. And you know, hormones and everything you're going through, so it was just crashing down on me. So I, um, I actually um, contemplated suicide. I was actually high up on a story, maybe two, three stories high. Um, and it was a scaffolding. It was a church in my backyard that was being renovated. So I climbed up to the top and I was standing there and, and there is my tummy and at that point I hadn't even felt Mercedes move. So I stood there and I was looking down and the moment I was going to take a step forward, she moved. And for the first time in my life, I felt a purpose that I was there. To, I was in this world to look after someone other than me. So I stepped back and I got off and I came down and I went back home and that was it, you know, and I had her and I had all my children. So, you know, she was, uh, you know, she knew, she knew she was in there. She knew that mama need, needed help and she did it. Um, as a child advocate, I joined um, this um, non-governmental organization called Vision Fiji in 2009 and then not long after that, I became the chair for Vision Fiji. So I got involved in that and it's to do with um, raising the visibility of children here in Fiji. So some of our projects that we achieved um, included 
uh, securing almost a million dollars worth of books, library books, for all the 736 primary schools in Fiji. You know, the Vision Fiji message, it's after 10 p.m. Do you know where children are? That's Vision Fiji, you know, if you didn't know. It's been running for such a long time. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm involved in. Of course, I'm involved in a lot of community work, uh, dealing with, uh, you know, sports for youth, as well as um, uh, I um, advise youth at church. So I'm a church youth advisor. And, uh, you know, just about everything from spiritual to, you know, to um, temporal needs and things like that, school. So I have a group of, of youth from church, which I enjoy very much, so, yeah. <laughs> I laugh all the time at myself and my daughter knows that. Especially even when I produce some TikTok stuff, I'm like, I look at it again and I think, I just laugh at it, you know, because it's ludicrous why I have to do that in the first place when you have such misogynist comments thrown at you, you know? Uh, you know, the flea market comment, my dress is too tight, my dress is too short, why isn't she wearing a sulira? Um, why is her hair tied back? It should be combed up, you know? Uh, she, she's not okay enough. I get all, all sorts of comments and I just have to laugh at them, you know? I have to laugh at them because not a, not a man laughing at the people commenting, but it actually is, um, uh, there are moments where I can just not take myself so seriously. <laughs> and you've got to do that in politics. We moved, they moved the Fiji finals to Lautoka. So it was always here at the stadium and we always won. So we went over to Lautoka and we lost. Thanks to Vadiseva Tavanga. Every time I see her, I said, it's your fault, Vadiseva Tavanga. And she just has a good laugh. That's we lost to grandma that year. But I remember um, being a cheerleader that year at, um, at, uh, at the stadium there in, in Lautoka, Churchill Park. And that was the first time that I um, noticed uh, Faith Grace. She was Jackie Savu at the time. She was Faith Grace. So she was the lead cheerleader for Suva Grandma. And you know, they don't just cheer, they also jeer. <laughs> That's pretty fair, and I think they'll admit it too. But, you know, it's just like you're watching them and they just tease, you know, and they just tease and tease. And we're sitting on this side and our teachers over there saying to us, sit still, you're ladies, you're not allowed to get up and respond. And then on the other side, we'll see the Jasper Williams cheerleaders. And that's when I first noticed Barbara Mali Mali. And she was the head cheerleader there, and she too was jeering. So it was me here, there's Barbara Malimali, a fair, uh, fellow lawyer, and of course, Faith Grace is on the other side for grandma. And I think my mo most nostalgic moment, experience at that time was that we had the Arceus boys who were right beside us, and they were just getting us. They said, get up, get up and do the dance. And of course, you know, going against our teacher, we just stood up there and we just faced off right there in the front. There was hardly any space. We just faced off and did our best dances, man. And you know, and after that, I think when we went to foundation, we all just remembered each other saying, you were the head cheerleader, you were the head cheerleader. And then we just became friends, you know, from that. So till today, we still talk about that because as hard as I, uh, you know, did my moves, we still lost. So, you know, you, <laughs> that's what I remember that we lost to Suva Grammar School and to Faith Grace. <laughs> and she won't let me forget it. <laughs> I would say um, it's from my mother, my late mom. She gave me the best advice. She gave me a lot of advice. Of course, I didn't listen to most of it uh, until you, you know, later in life, either when they're gone or you've lived away and then you think, Pam, mom was always right. Mother's always right, yeah. But you know, um, she, she would say to me, uh, you know, whatever you do, Linda, whatever you get yourself into, you must always, always re re like retreat, always retreat into your own space or into your own quiet time and just listen. Just listen to what the Lord has to say to you. She always taught me that. She said, you know, um, don't ever respond right away. Um, if there's something that happens to you that is contentious, don't take people on right there. You know, just come away and 
sit quietly and just listen, you know? And uh, that's, what, that's what she always reminded me of. So whenever, when she was still alive, when I joined parliament, whenever I'd go through any contention um, in politics, I would actually pick up the phone and call her and tell her what has happened. And she would say, okay, come home. So I'd just drive home to her and we'd sit there and she would just pray, pray over me. She would just pray over me. She said, don't ever forget the Lord in anything you do, anything you do. Oh yeah, I can hold my breath. I can hold my breath. I think it's up to maybe four minutes. Yeah, I can hold my breath. I, I'm, I've, I've gone up to four minutes because I used to swim a lot in the Langere River and there's all the boys there and then there's me. So I was a tomboy when I was younger. Um, but I, we used to learn to hold our breaths and I think I got up to four minutes at one time. I haven't tried it lately, maybe I should, but yeah, that's probably my record. My world record for Linda is four minutes, yes. Sleep, I sleep. And uh, my kids know not to disturb me when I'm asleep uh, because uh, I just, I love sleep. I just, and if I'm not asleep, then uh, I love to spend time with family. Just sitting, having tea and laughing, joking, uh, but mostly sleep, I love to sleep. Yeah, favorite pastime. Uh, right now it's Bingo Miao. I mean, I, I literally sang this song. Uh, we had a fundraiser like a couple of weeks ago and the band performed it and I literally I stood up and I knew all the words. I was so proud because it contains some of those phrases that are really Itauke phrases. I mean like, people are like, what does that mean, you know? Or, and I was like, yeah, it's like, it's like you know, uh, moss, eh? Uh, it, it's hard for, for something to stick when you are slippery. Apparently, that's what it means. But then my brother said to me, you know, a rolling stone has no moss. And I thought, I didn't even think that was the direct translation to it, okay. Yeah, rolling stone has no moss because it's constantly moving, it's smooth, it doesn't, it doesn't catch any of that stuff. But I really enjoy that song right now, so I sing it a lot. Well, here's my tauvu, so I can say it out loud. I'd love to invite up a cook in Alawa. <laughs> I'm just such a fan. Cooking, no. I would not cook. <laughs> that might be the last time I have dinner with you. <laughs> um, we would order takeout. I love Enfo. Enfo food is yum. So yeah, I take them. I take them out to Enfo. Um, fashion to me uh, is something that can define you. Right? It can make or break you because if you're standing in front of a whole crowd, the first thing they notice is what you're wearing. Never mind what comes out of your mouth. So it can make or break you. People remember, oh my gosh, did you see what she was wearing? It was amazing. Or it was like, oh, it was a train wreck. You know, it could, it, either or. You don't even have to speak. I'm a chameleon. I mean, if, you, if I'm suddenly told that I have to go to an event, uh, you know, in the village just near the city, I will run home and change. I will make sure that I dress the part. You almost have to wear something where you will blend in, where you belong to the event you're at. You've, you've, got to, you've got to be very switched on about that. You know, you've got to be very switched on about that. So for me, my style is really defined by um, who I'm with and what I'm doing. I don't drink and I don't smoke. Um, I used to drink some time ago, but um, I've just made it a rule. So I've become a teetotaler now and uh, lots and lots of water and sleep. I'm Linda Tambuya and I'm on The Pulse with Andy Blake. Opposition Whip, Honourable Member of our Fijian Parliament and former Miss Hibiscus, Linda Tambuya, sharing insights into her personal and professional life. You can follow Linda via her social media platforms and keep up to date with her causes and campaigns. Great stuff. Time for a short break. Stick around. We are checking out the hottest new accommodation located in Wailalo Beach in the Jet Set next. You're watching The Pulse. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola.
in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Typical weekend getaway includes sun, sand and seaside bliss. And if you're looking for that quintessential tropical feel, the Nandis Wailolo Beach just might surprise you. Now you don't have to break the bank to enjoy a relaxing getaway surrounded by picturesque views including gorgeous sunsets. In fact, if you're looking to escape the hustle and bustle of the city, then this is where you need to be. Situated along Nandi's favorite beach is Sailors Beach, Fiji. This fun and affordable getaway offers you the typical Fiji experience from a local's point of view. And so I think people come because it's nice, um, clean, uh, good, good rooms, accommodations right on the beach, and it's, it's budget, you know, it's within people's yeah. budget, so um, they're not paying an arm and a leg, they can still afford to stay here, but enjoy that beautiful view as well. And also it's not too far from Nandi International exactly. Airport. Exactly, that's, yeah, that's it, but for international guests, that would be the thing. Um, but we, we, like I said, mostly local, we've been getting a lot of locals and for them it's just being able to enjoy all of this without paying for a price that's, that they would have to pay if they went and stayed at sea. Yeah. And you also have the best views of the sunset. Oh yes. So that sun is, for me that is my, my attraction. That that's is my exactly economy. right. Sunset, Apart from the food yeah. of course because yeah. I'm a foodie. Room prices range from 129 Fijian dollars and you can choose from a balcony view to a standard ocean view. The resort also offers tasty meal and bar options including breakfast and is our recommended stay when planning for your next getaway. Seaside setting, check. Away from the hustle and bustle, check. Comfortable rooms, check. Friendly staff and service, check. And my favorite, delicious food, a double check, like those famous seafood platters. I think I just made the decision for your next vacation when planning your next Nandi getaway. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.
Hola, welcome back to The Pulse. I trust you are enjoying our premiere and first episode. Before the break, our Eat, Stay, Love segments profile on Sailor's Beach, Fiji in Nandi. Now prepare to set sail up the famous Rewa River and discover one of the iconic landmarks in the province of Rewa, the Nasali water taxis that has been ferrying passengers for years. This is a profile on the colourful SME. When you think Nasali in the Rewa Delta, you immediately picture colourful punts ferrying passengers across the muggy waters of the Nasali River. And unless you come from the Rewa province or the bordering Tailevu province, then you will be familiar with this colourful SME that are providing services to more than 14 villages along the Rewa Delta. <laughs> Nakana Yazango Rokomewai, Turangani Lomonikoro, Mena Sanabaka Turango Rewa. I was working business Chico and a member of the Nanondra and Garabichu and Linwunwa and Nondra Vitosaki. The Taoni, saving an Avuna Revenge Kina, Rangandra Manawanga. Member of the Nanakana Vatora, the Chicana Nandambul and Uval. My Nangona Buno Kito being Garavichino on a lending a chingo, Nasali lending. Kevo come back on in a Sindoni Kilana Bunongo Nasali lending. Okoyo Nina Rania Zonga Maisuba Saroni Nina Sasana Satumibango in Osori. My no sorry Saroni Nina Bogamuria Sarmain and Gunsalabana Airport. Yellow Sarmain and Dona Volim Bulla Toko Mailu, Winbokash Hospital. Sana <laughs> customer Koya ko na sinro ni zala tana tekal tekir na bima taka kena biya kaki. Oi na ngau na ngandra pa me utiko puna kena bisnis mo. Wareza na chinkaliwa na ronondolu. Kena ronondolu chinkali mau gay me utiko puka wangka kena. Ondole ni pakaera do wa wa puka lebu na lebu nuwa me na nonra puka lelezi. Upsang gay do ngangandre tu. Mento na nongku wangka. Ni mai nang onea, ele puna wang kapi ing karabi chukon nang onea, mai tei ngaya, i tei ngo kele. Au sangai do chikolo i lomangu, meu ing karabi ile ni puna mo kele le stole. Mer kuni wang wana pa sinja mai tei sina i sana ngo. Koa ko vi pokong git kini pe umo ing karabi nang bisini simbo, ana bukun nang dapa kali le dina le ni puna wa, mer ka kuni mer. Bole bole le buwa wang kai furum mai nang ono mai tei wuk mer ni mai tei wuk wang ka, <hesitation> ufam. Lebu nang ona, esya ngatu mai biko nai labo, ingo nang ai kosiru mai kini wai, iku saku nai nai labo, pesenja, cha pakam nang ai lala tuna tang, nyo nasiru ngamai wai, ma kutunga, 
ni lobi kona singa tau mi kona langi ni lobi kuchu na langi makutunga iyo kune ina langa ni ngono me yazu kina na matin jawa me yazu wiki anda na lobi bichi sena lobi buru bura e kito ba kila sranga na ndeba ni sengai na pasindia sini toso na mbasi sini toso na bika ke Kembali lock serang aku itu terang anak garabi bisnis. Atau lagi nana ilabu aku itu rote siang ini. Tahu tak kosar? Mereka kan nangau na. Entah tu kit. Ureza ni bikin ni nawa orang cuma. Nabi bisnis bo bisnis nak? Bisnis rawa rawa. Kau kira mana dia dijebak dalam bisnis ibu? Dia satu orang anak bosota, satu orang tangan anak kami yang balai tanah rakyat. Balai tanah bisnis ibu siang ni cukup lama ni balai, mau cukup itu mbak. Kembali nabi ngono tu tak kau mana? Eh boleh ditegi kau tu nak kau ni lagi, na? Bikin ni nak orang cuma ini, bawa ungkit cina bikin dah. Kau kau entah ngantri apa nabi bisnis ibu? Abi kita unasa liu cingo kita sa posoli bak sal cingan di bikem ni era rawa sar. Esor do bibu ke mai bir na cuma balangi bikem ni meren rabuli kita nomni wanga meren izi bak kita nomni bisnis bangko. Yo bibu ke bungkit cingan bikem ni nak orang cuma ni cakap kau ni mana kata muni tak kau ni bisnis bo era rawa sar. Rawa rawa sar nak kena tak kena bisnis bo. Abi nak cingan kita nanti nanga kata kita nomu muma tua. Eh, nak buku ni kenang garap ini, tapi ngoh, biar lain dulu. In our Culture Explained segment this week, we profile the famous Sawelau Caves, and they are Sawas made famous by Brooke Shield in her Blue Lagoon film. And you can visit the cave on Captain Cook's Three Nights Cruise to the Asawa and Mamanuda Islands. Sawai Lao is odd in origin and in looks, but you can't help but be drawn to this tiny island. Dominated by a jagged shoreline and a single high mountain, it stands out as the only limestone island in a chain of volcanic ones. The main attraction is the beautiful saltwater caves made famous by the Hollywood hit movie Blue Lagoon that starred Brook Shields. Such a standout island attracts many legends. A local legend tells of a giant hawk that lived in the Sawai Lao cave. How it carried off a princess called Nayambasali from the ancient village of Naithombothombo and how her prince Rokolu avenged the death by killing the hawk. It is said that the winds Rokolu summoned to elevate him to pierce the hawk's neck still blow in the Sawai Lao caves. The sacred Sawailau Caves are also known as the resting place of the ten-headed ancient Fijian god Ulutini. our premiere and first episode for The Pulse. I'm Andy Blake and I trust you enjoyed the show. My Talano with opposition whip Linda Tambuya, our profile on Sailors Beach Fiji and Anasali Water Taxis. I look forward to your company again next week right here on my TV. For comments and questions, send us a message via our Facebook page, The Pulse with Andy Blake. Remember to like our page and give this video a big thumbs up. 
You can also watch this episode again on demand via our MyTV YouTube channel and our Eat, Stay, Love segments on board Fiji Airways in flight soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe. Misamo de Manda. You feel it, I feel it, it's in the box. It's in the, it's in the box. It's in the box. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.